Hello Raptors fans and welcome to Raptors Report. Today we're going to be looking at a few potential trades that could help the Raptors compete in a suddenly competitive Eastern Conference. Let me start by saying that I do not believe that the Raptors need to make a change. Currently there are a number of key players on the team who are injured and the Raptors are still over 500. With that being said, I do think that the roster could be improved and Raptors management aren't shy about shaking things up if they feel like they could get impactful players for their squad. I've included some timestamps in the description so that if you feel so inclined, you can jump directly to the trade proposals toward the end of the video. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's take a look at why teams make trades. First of all, teams make trades to address roster issues. For example, a team might have too many good players at one position and not enough at another, like mm, the Knicks. They infamously decided to sign four players who play the power forward position this offseason, so they'd probably like to trade a couple of them for a guard. Another reason is that a team is rebuilding and is trying to get assets for a player they believe will leave in free agency. Take for example the 2011 Nuggets where a young general manager by the name of Masai Ujiri managed to get a number of good assets back for disgruntled star Carmelo Anthony by trading him to the Knicks. The team in question could be trying to compete and is making a trade to get better right now, like the Boston Celtics did back in 2007. The Celtics traded picks, young players, expiring contracts, and cash to the now-defunct Seattle Supersonics and Minnesota Timberwolves for stars Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett, to pair with their star, Paul Pierce. They went on to win the championship that season. Another potential reason for a trade is that a team is trying to dump salary. The Brooklyn Nets smartly rebuilt their roster by taking on large, long-term contracts in exchange for draft picks, prospects, and cash. In fact, the Raptors took advantage of their services twice by using the Nets to dump their contracts of Damare Carroll as well as Greg Monroe, using draft picks to unload them. The reason I'm bringing up these guidelines is because I often see trades being proposed that don't take these things into consideration, which is unfortunate because virtually every trade in the NBA is made for at least one of these reasons. Another thing that needs to be considered is that trade proposals must take into account all teams involved. It has to make sense for everyone in order to be plausible. The last thing to mention is that most trades that happen in season are between teams looking to get better in future seasons and teams looking to get better now. Most of the time, that's bad teams trading veterans to good teams for prospects and picks. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's take a look at what the Raptors' issues are and what they're looking for. First of all, the Raptors need to fix the logjam. The Raptors should be looking to combine multiple good players in a trade for one great player. Second is to pick a direction. Are the Raptors sellers or buyers? And last, they need to build around the 2021 free agency class. Let's take a look at the minutes crunch. The month of November proved that the Raptors were competitive without Kyle Lowry and Serge Ibaka. And in December, the injuries to Siakam, Powell and Gasol proved that the Raptors have real depth at guard, forward and big. Van Vliet, Hollis Jefferson, Terrence Davis and Chris Boucher all soaked up those available minutes and produced at a high level. The point here is that the Raptors have a breadth of talent, and it would make a lot of sense to combine a few players on the roster trying to find an upgrade. The Raptors are in a good financial situation currently. Their investment in Pascal Siakam has been a big success, and they don't have any toxic assets on the books. They're winning games, and they don't really need to make any big trades. Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster are on the opposite of the hot seat. The cold seat? So, they don't need to make any wild trades to salvage their jobs. That means that they have the luxury of being patient and waiting for a good deal to come along. But the question is for when? How seriously are the Raptors attempting to compete this season? Are the Raptors serious about going all in and trying to get to the finals? Or will they look to move some of the veterans for assets that will help them down the line? Whichever direction they decide to go in, they need to be cognizant of the 2021 draft class. The Raptors have done a good job keeping the books clean for that class, with only Pascal Siakam being signed to a substantial contract that extends past that date. Some top 2021 free agents are Kawhi, Giannis, LeBron, Paul George, 
Anthony Davis, Bradley Beal, Rudy Gobert, and many, many more players. Being financially flexible for the 2021 free agency class will give the Raptors a big advantage in a year when half the league will be looking to make a big move. But what do the Raptors want in a trade? First of all, rebounding. Rebounding has been the Raptors' Achilles heel all season long, and finding players who address that should be a priority. Second, a scorer who can shoot. The Raptors could use some more scoring, particularly of the outside shooting variety. A forward or a big. The Raptors have strong guard play with Powell, Van Vliet, Lowry, and Terrence Davis, so adding a forward or big would be ideal. And lastly, someone who fits the Raptors' formula. The Raptors definitely have a type. High IQ, versatile, willing to play defense. They should target players who fit that description. Before I get into who I think the Raptors should target in a trade, I want to start with someone I think that the Raptors should not trade for. Kevin Love has been making a lot of headlines recently as a player who could be on the move. I've read some online discussions surrounding whether Kevin Love would make a good fit on the Toronto Raptors, and superficially, there would seem to be a case for that. Love is a rebounder, a scorer, and a guy who can shoot. He's a veteran who's been deep in the postseason a number of times, and could definitely help the Raptors in a number of areas. And the Cavs are bad, and they're looking to unload him to get younger, so he probably wouldn't cost very much to attain. So why am I not a fan of this trade? Well, I have 90 million reasons, one for each of the dollars remaining on Kevin Love's contract after this season is done. There are other reasons as well, the first of which is his defense. Love is a good shooter, rebounder, and is a smart player, but he's never been very good on the defensive end, and this will be magnified as he ages. He's 31, and the team that trades for him will be on the hook for three additional years. If the Raptors have any desire to get in on the 2021 sweepstakes, they need to stay away from Kevin Love. In this case, I do not like the look of Love. Now let's talk about the trades I think the Raptors should make. Marcus Morris is having a great season for a terrible Knicks squad and is signed to a one-year contract, and the Knicks are loaded to the brim with players who play the same position, almost all of whom are on longer deals. That means that Morris is very likely to be dealt this season, and he ticks a number of boxes for the Raptors. He's one of the best shooters in the league right now, hitting 47% of his threes on six attempts per game. He's a forward, and he can help the Raptors out on the boards a bit. He fits into a lot of different lineups, and his strong shooting would be a great complement to the Raptors offense. One thing that might bother me a bit if I were Raptors management would be his confrontational personality. He and his brother make headlines for their bad behavior although he might be fine in the Raptors veteran heavy locker room. Here's a look at what the Raptors Knicks trade might look like. The foundation of a deal could be Serge Ibaka and a second round pick for Marcus Morris and Wayne Ellington. Wayne Ellington has been absolutely terrible for the Knicks and his contract runs an additional year after this one. The Raptors would take on his salary and send a second rounder to the Knicks in order to make up the small difference in value between Ibaka and Morris. The trade helps the Raptors because I could easily see Marcus Morris playing alongside Marc Gasol or Chris Boucher, something that Ibaka struggles to do. I'm sure the Knicks will receive a lot of other offers for Morris' services, and some may be more enticing, but Morris is a rental, pure and simple, so if a deal does get made, I assume that it will be one similar in value to this trade. The next player I think the Raptors should target is Steven Adams. Adams is a player who's impressed me for years now, and I think that he could fill the starting center position for the Raptors quite convincingly. The Raptors are in a bit of a pickle. Ibaka and Gasol expire at the end of the season, meaning that they'll have a hole to fill at center next year. Adams would give them a starting caliber player whose contract expires right before they need to make a decision for the 2021 free agency class. Steven Adams is 26 years old, which puts him right around the same age as Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet, and he's an incredible rebounder, a great post defender, and is arguably the toughest guy in the NBA. He may not be a shooter, but he's a guy that can anchor your defense and provide the rebounding that the Raptors sorely need. Although the Thunder have been winning games lately, they're looking to build around 21-year-old Shea Gilgis Alexander, and Steven Adams might not be in their long-term plans, especially if they find a suitor for Chris Paul. If the Raptors want to trade for Steven Adams, the two contracts that stick out are Marc Gasol's and Serge Ibaka's, who earn roughly the same amount of money. Steven Adams is younger than either Gasol or Ibaka and has a longer contract, 
meaning that the Raptors would probably need to pitch in some extras in order for the deal to work for Oklahoma City. A trade scenario that might work is Gasol plus the Raptors' 2020 first-round pick for Adams. Even if the Thunder want to make the playoffs this season, Mark Gasol could man the five spot for them, and his contract comes off the books at the end of the season. The pick would likely be in the 20s, and coupled with an expiring contract, might be attractive enough for OKC if they plan on adding pieces this offseason, especially if they need to take salary back in a Chris Paul deal. The next player the Raptors should take a look at is Davis Bertans. Davis Bertans is in a similar situation to Marcus Morris. He's in the final year of his contract, and he's blowing the doors off with his shooting in the Wizards' chuck and duck offense. The Wizards have the fourth best offense in the league and are dead last defensively in the association, with a historically bad defensive rating of 117 points given up per 100 possessions. They're also playing at the third fastest pace in the league. So what does this mean? It means they're trying to pump the value of their assets by shooting a ton of shots and not playing any defense. That said, Bertans is a frickin' laser beam at the forward spot, shooting 44% from three on nearly nine attempts per game, and he can shoot from anywhere with almost zero shot preparation required. Bertans, like Morris, would be a rental, and like any rental, the idea is not to overpay to acquire him. Here is my proposed trade. Norman Powell for Davis Bertans and Isaiah Thomas straight up. Isaiah Thomas would be salary fodder to make the trade work financially. Powell is having a good year and is under contract until the end of next season, meaning that the Wizards could look at this as getting an asset for Bertans, who will likely cost a lot more to keep than they might be willing to spend at the end of this season. For the Raptors, Bertans would give them a serious shooting threat that could give their offense the kick it needs to compete this year in the Eastern Conference playoffs. I've saved the biggest, boldest, and craziest trade for the end of the video. The Golden State Warriors made one of the shrewdest signings this offseason when they picked up D'Angelo Russell for four years. Russell had just come off of an all-star season with the Nets, where he managed to transform his game from disappointing bust to burgeoning star. And the Warriors figured that even if the fit wasn't ideal, Russell was a player that they could easily deal down the line for assets. At 23 years old, Russell is already one of the better scorers in the league, averaging 23 points per game on good percentages. He shoots nearly 9.5 threes per game and converts on over 36% of them. While he did have a nasty looking injury versus the Mavericks not too long ago, the prognosis is that it isn't too serious and he should be back playing in the not too distant future. Remember when I said that the Raptors have a depth problem and they should make a trade to consolidate talent? Well, Russell gives them the opportunity to do just that. At 23 years of age, Russell has the opportunity to be a long-term all-star caliber guard for any franchise that decides to trade for him meaning that the Raptors are going to have to fork over some assets to attain him. OG Ananobi, Terrence Davis, and an expiring contract are a steep price to pay for Russell, as they both have a lot of potential. But Russell is a valuable commodity, a young, star player locked into a contract for the next four seasons. Russell and Siakam would be a formidable one-two punch that the Raptors could build around for years, and even in the short term, the addition of Russell would give the Raptors another scoring threat to bolster their chances of coming out of the Eastern Conference. For the Warriors, Russell is probably not in their long-term plans anyway, as they already have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. And OG Ananobi and Terrence Davis are two very cheap, good young players who fit better in the long term. And that concludes my thoughts regarding trades for the Toronto Raptors as we approach the trade deadline. As you may have noticed, I took about a month-long hiatus from producing content, and the reason for that is that there was a death in my family, and coupled with the holidays, I wasn't able to commit the time required to produce weekly content. In the new year, however, you can continue to expect weekly videos from me, plus extras. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also check out my other Raptors content. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter for more NBA thoughts. Thanks for tuning in to Raptors Report, your source for in-depth Raptors content.